Growing up, I was awkward. A nerd with glasses who sucked at sports and couldn't hold a conversation. Even worse, I had a speech impediment. Many of my classmates mocked me, asking which foreign country I was from. My voice and my confidence were limited. Thankfully, help came from an unlikely place, video game development. I had never heard of computer science before, didn't know anyone who programmed. Honestly, I found computers and engineering incredibly boring. I was confused by the complexities of this new language, frequently frustrated that my code would not compile, and I deleted my entire project more than once. It was in these first moments where I thought to myself, great, I suck at this too. But it turns out I'm pretty stubborn. And after many, many tries, my code compiled. When I finally learned that complicated logic really just comes down to some crafty if statements, I realized I could code. Coding became my second language, and it wasn't long before I spoke it more fluently than English. In front of a computer, I developed a voice. I may have been too shy to tell a story verbally, but I did have the power to build immense journeys, virtually. By that point, I still struggled to talk to people. So naturally, I decided to do the only thing a self-conscious middle schooler with a speech impediment would do. Speak in front of 2,000 people at the middle school graduation. Upon hearing of my decision to speak, my best friend urged me to drop out since all the other kids made fun of me for the way I talked. She wasn't wrong. I'd likely mispronounce half my words if I took that stage. But when learning to code, I usually miswrote half my lines. I got used to screwing up. And it was screwing up those lines of code that taught me to embrace improvement instead of aiming for perfection. So on I went. And come graduation, I stood in front of classmates, parents, and teachers and spoke on the topic of embracing failure. Computer science gave me a voice, and I was beginning to use it beyond the screen. With each game or tool that I built, I realized that I was more than just a nerd. I learned that coding allows for just as much creativity as painting, music, or acting. I had the power to create magnificent things. In a world where most everything of value seems to require qualifications, whether that be years of school or certifications, there is something so empowering about a meaningful endeavor without these prerequisites. The ability to pick up a pen, a paintbrush, a ball, or a keyboard and find creativity can give anyone confidence and a voice. I believe that computer science is a creative field, giving anyone the ability to code. You don't have to be good at math or understand how a computer works. The computer does not care where you are from or what you look like. So to the young child somewhere out there who doesn't think computer science is for them, I hope that I can change your mind. This is Alexandra Jordan. At nine years old, she created super fun kid time for kids to schedule playdates with each other. She recently presented this website at one of the largest technology conferences in the world. This is Masako Wakamiya. She's an 82-year-old retired banker from Japan who had no technological knowledge. But after learning to code, she created a game for senior iPhone users and is now an influential figure in Japan. These are the faces of computer scientists around the world. They channeled their creativity into something beautiful and consequently expanded their individual voices. Because computer science is built on universal logic and creativity, there are thousands of similar inspiring tales. Every programmer has his or her own unique story and perspective. In fact, many of the best computer scientists I've met don't consider themselves coders, 
but artists, researchers, or writers, using the computer as a tool to extend their passions. You don't have to be a coder to code. Likewise, everyone in this room, regardless of their background, has the ability to code. Inspired to give more people this opportunity, I started a program to teach elementary and middle school students the fundamentals of computer science. During these classes, I asked the students to present their own app or website ideas. I was impressed by their plans to connect people with animal shelters and find nearby recycling locations. Kids naturally develop these virtuous ideas. Armed with the means and a voice, specifically a computer and the ability to code, now they can act on these ideas. About a year into the program, I taught a group of first graders, much younger than my typical students. Most couldn't read, and several didn't even know English. I had no clue how to teach students that I could barely communicate with. But the language of coding logic transcends these barriers. So I used computer science projects with no words, many of which did not even require a computer. Instead, the students drew logic flowcharts using arrows and stick figures. In 1999, the Hole in the Wall project began, when a group of researchers placed a computer in a remote area of India. Education levels were low, no one had seen a computer, and no one spoke English. Nonetheless, by the end of the first day, 70 children ages 6 to 13 were browsing the internet. This is a remarkable example of self-education, and it demonstrates the astonishing intuitiveness of technology. Despite differences in educational backgrounds, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, and gender, all students saw their learning skills improve dramatically after using the computer. Learning how to use a computer is the obvious first step towards learning to code, and both tasks can be entirely self-taught. Many websites offer free computer science classes that can transform anyone from a clueless internet user to an adept app developer. Learning to code only requires the passion to create and the persistence to keep trying. Creating software is an organic and imaginative process. When creating a simple game, a programmer acquires technical knowledge. But what you don't see is that she has also failed hundreds of times, relied on problem-solving skills to overcome hurdles, and eventually succeeded in breathing something into existence. A lot of maturity occurs in that process. For me and many others, computer science has been a powerful force of freedom and creativity, making us confident and empowered. I'm now studying computer science at Brown University. During my first semester, I kept hearing about Andy Van Dam, this famous 80-year-old professor who helped invent hypertext and founded Brown's computer science department. Apparently, the character Andy from Toy Story is named after him. And clearly, anyone worthy of having a cartoon character named after them, by a team led by Steve Jobs, no less, must be a pretty amazing person. Impressed by his many accomplishments, I decided to apply for an open position on Andy's research group. But the call for an interview never came. Then I did something I never would have contemplated if computer science hadn't made me brave. I went unannounced to Andy's office and knocked on his door. The moment my hand hit the wood, I had this overwhelming desire to run in the opposite direction and never look back. Who was I, a young girl with no credentials or prestige, to talk to the acclaimed Andy Van Dam? But despite our vast differences and accomplishments, I knew I could code, so we spoke the same language. I waited for the door to open and introduce myself. Hi, my name is Madeline Griswold. I'm a computer scientist, and I would love to work with you. Andy invited me to sit down and talk more about my experience with computer science. Apparently, that was my first job interview. Empowered with the skills, creativity, and confidence taught through programming, I gained the privilege to work on Andy's research group. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Since then, I've worked on two research groups, interned at a New York City startup, and programmed for Bloomberg. Computer science has transformed me from a little girl too insecure to talk in class, to a woman pursuing technical research, and now on stage speaking to all of you. I should not be the exception, but I did have the privilege of learning to code at a young age and the determination to keep trying, regardless of initial difficulties or frustrations. Not everyone will aspire to be a computer scientist, but anyone looking for a way to express and create should give coding a chance. One way or another, find your own creative path and use it to develop a passion and a voice. From there, expand your reach, develop your confidence, and do not be shy about knocking on the biggest, scariest doors that you can find. Thank you.